I'm motivated to change it Times to count me out, what you do the math, I'm the greatest Forget the pills that they hand me, I'm putting no holes in the matrix Money on my mind, I got no time to be thinking fear Early bird catches the worm, so I'm Chanticleer Waking haters and data, show them I got me the power We ain't wasting no hours, solemnly I declare Before the money, I had me the vision Building empire the right way, you'll end up in prison If I'm eating fam, eating too Get misconstrued. I want me the event to do it with the spoilers too. Many days he was hungry, but got full off the mission. On every move to be more efficient. Yo, we welcome these naysayers and competitions. This ain't a hobby, this my true religion. Yeah. I'm a global mind. I'm a global mind. By design, I'm a king. I'm a ball with my team. I'm a mobile mind. I'm a mobile mind. Can't be taking no L's. Only thing I know is bad. guys we are now in another episode of real talk chicago this is your host isaiah here today with a very special guest in the building we got urban art legend graffiti nerd um nerd tell us a little bit about you and your background just in chicago okay you know um first off i've been doing graffiti like as long as i can kind of remember and that's due to the fact of growing up in Uptown. And you know, Uptown Chicago, some of y'all don't know about Uptown, but for the North Side, it's like pretty much the rowdiest neighborhood on the North Side. And- uh, Uptown and Howard, right? Like Uptown, and then you got the jungle, Howard, mm-hmm. exactly. And uh, we had a few spots in between, but you know, when people think of the North Side, they think it's sweet, you know, but Uptown has always been Uptown. And uh, growing up there, everybody did graffiti, and I was just so lucky to be around, like, uh, you know, some graffiti legends growing up as a young kid and just learning from some people that knew how to do the lines and knew how to, you know, keep the, the, the real culture of the graffiti sense. And when, keep, when you say do the lines, what do you mean? You know, do the train lines. You know, I, I grew up right off of the, uh, they would say the red line now. The L, yeah. Know, right off the L, and Wilson train station mm-hmm. was my home station right there by Truman College. And you know, doing the lines mean like doing the train system, doing all the stations, doing the insides of the trains, the windows, the doors, the outside panels, and then ultimately doing a burner on the outside of a train, like going in the yards. That's like... That's like the the greatest feat to do as a writer, you know, in my era growing up. It might not be the same for some of these kids now, but in my era, that was the shit, you know, that was Beat Street, you know, go... Do a eight whole car, eight car, you know, top to bottom mm-hmm. in the end, and that was like the ultimate goal. And to be, you know, and to do the the most wild, stylish, craziest burner that can't nobody read, you know. So when I um, initially did an episode with my guy Zeb, who's uh-huh. done the podcast, like I think that initial interview was in Tonsor Shop, where one of your pieces was. Shout out to our sponsors over okay. at Tonsor, what but Zeb, what up? That's one of your spots. And I remember being in high school and we had like a fucking, I don't remember. You you had to teach the class how to do some shit. And I'm fairly certain Zeb just went up there and winged it. But what he did say was he basically taught the entire class how you can drop a battery in between the train doors and you can Uh, stop. (laughs) Right. Like and you can make it where the conductor will have to stop the train, go there. And you got X amount of time to do a piece. Do a piece and, uh. Yeah, do, the do, genius for those kids, you know, keeping the the trains painted. You know, right now they're being crushed. I don't know, a lot of people ain't seen them, but there is a lot of trains being painted by a lot of Chicago artists and a lot of artists coming in from overseas. It's like a dream for them to come over here and paint the Chicago train system. Is other that than, like, than, I didn't realize that was a thing. You know, we're big, yeah. Right. Oh, it's, the, it's like the biggest thing in the world, you know, to be an artist and come do a Chicago train. I didn't realize how huge and how like this is, it's a fucking global thing that there's people I'm sure that follow you that fuck around, don't even speak English, but oh, they're yeah. just fans of, you know, the, your art style and urban art in general. I, I can speak on a little bit about that because 
you know, one thing we're big about in Chicago is nobody else having the same name as you. Mm -hmm. But the graffiti world got so small, there's nerds in all countries now. So I meet a nerd from down in Africa somewhere, and I meet a nerd from Brazil. And, and I just, you know, I'm at, I, in the beginning, I'd be like, oh, man, y'all can't have my name. But now I'm like, hey, nerds unite. And I got a bunch of friend nerds from around the world. And, and, and I just think it's cool that somebody actually thinking the same thing I was thinking. Like, I'm a right nerd. You know, who's going to think about that? You know? So are you considered an old schooler in the game at this point? Uh, I don't consider myself an old schooler. But everybody else considers me <laughs> an old schooler or OG. And, and I am walking around a little slower. But I'm not painting uh, like an old schooler. But what I like to do is continue to show old school elements in my style but be c current with today's styles and reinvent the new styles like every time I paint you know I like to I like to still get out it's it's painting is like a, a all day battle no matter who's next to you it's your own crewmates or not you're still trying to do the coldest dopest piece mm -hmm. that you ever done in your life and you're always battling yourself too you know and all the other artists that are out here because like oh, yeah you know when I come to the wall I know I'm I'm finna put it down, and I, I see, I usually let everybody go first just to see where they go come with before I come <laughs> with the whole arsenal out on them, but usually I come with so much shit and have everything ready and still only use, like, three cans of paint and have, like, 100 cans out. It seems like, I don't know what happened, but maybe, like, a year a year ago, did, did about three, four blocks down from here, one artist did a huge fucking piece it was a dope piece and then the rest of the wall was just like brick so it seemed like artists kept going by it like well he did one so oh, i'm about to come do one and then it ended up with like four big ass pieces it's, it's been a lot of that going on this year i mean during the covid and during you know just 2020 it was like the most graffiti like takeover of people just going out and just painting illegal shit like even a lot of street artists that don't do a lot of illegal graffiti we're going to do these Viadocs, man. Viadocs in Little Village and Viadocs in, you know, uh, South, you know, 79 and <laughs> Inglewood. It was just people just brightening up the streets, man. And then when all the riots was going on, you know, everybody was getting all these uh, boarded up windows in. <laughs> just a lot of street art going on. And all in all, it was a fucked up year for a lot of shit, but a lot of dope art came out this year. A lot, a lot of powerful art came out and a lot of unity came through art. And a lot of people stayed sane, I would say, by doing art and creating, you know. I saw business owners in this neighborhood, even, you know, when they said everything had to be boarded up, commissioning street artists yeah, to do work. Yeah, that, which was really cool. And a lot of people were donating to help different spots get painted up and, you know, just promoting, you know, unity and, and promoting, um, you know, everything, man. We, we were doing... Uh, you know, X-Men crew, we got everybody in our crew. We got black, Puerto Rican, you know, we got Mexican, we got white people. We so, got so you Asian. brought up X-Men crew, yeah. and you were saying how diverse of a crew it is. X-Men crew is one of the older crews in Chicago, right? Yes, X-Men is definitely one of the older crews, one of the crews that I always wanted to be in as a kid. So just thinking about that, you know, it's old. I didn't even get into the X-Men crew until after I painted for 10 years. And people think I've been in the crew for day one, but X-Men actually started in New York in <laughs> 1979 by a guy named Tattoo, and it was brought down to Chicago by two cold brothers, uh, Agbar, uh, you know, big in the rap rap game, and uh, P. Lee Fresh. I'm, I'm glad that you said that because yeah. at one point, even though it seems disassociated today, the street art, the urban art was one of the penance of like hip hop. Right, like when it when hip hop really started, and my generation barely knows that. So I know the generation behind me fucking really don't know shit unless they're yeah. into the urban art. True. Um, and I think where we saw that was with um the Netflix show. Uh, the first season was good, second season was shit. The Get Down. Oh yeah. Right, and like that's you know one of the elements of hip hop has always been the street art, and so was it that way when you're coming up, like. Well, I, the, the way I came up was to be a b-boy, you had to be well-rounded in all the elements of hip-hop, pretty much the basic four elements, which is, you know, uh, graffiti from the art, breakdancing, emceeing, and DJing. I was a cold DJ, and I, I enjoyed DJing a lot, but I sucked at breaking. So when <laughs> I was real young, people were cold breakdancers from my neighborhood. Some people from my neighborhood 
were famous for breakdancing in front of the president. You know, so it was like, you know, breakdancing was the shit. And that's what all the girls like, but I sucked. So the first kind of forms of graffiti, I was tagging on the cardboard and drawing on the cardboard. We'd fold the cardboard up, walk into another neighborhood and just go battle people. <laughs> and I would represent that element by, bam, look at our cardboard, that shit's dope. Right. You know, even though I'm not breaking, I got had like one move, you know. I come out, do that move, that was it. You know? <laughs> You're looking at the cardboard the whole time. So yeah, you had to be dope at everything and, uh, you know, and or at least know what it is to be dope and know, have some history and learn about, you know, some traditional shit about MCing or DJing, not just coming in and just, you know, copying off the computer and just doing it, you know? So there's, there's, there's kind of like rules to That's tagging in urban art, right? Oh, big rules. It's big time what, rules. What would some of those rules be that are like just known amongst I all mean, street artists? I mean, there's, most of them are known and a lot of them are known and a lot of them are not being respected like they were. And that's been a problem. And I feel that's a problem with youth coming up, not being taught by old school <clears> or not wanting to, you know. No respect for the OGs. Years. But but there's a lot of youth that do have the respect. And the one thing about the whole thing with graffiti is people really want to really want to do it right. They want to be good at something. They want to be known that this is a real thing. You know, it's a real <laughs> culture. So they want to have the respect. But then you got some that, you know, go against the grain which is cool but some of the basic rules is like like when you got graffiti you got tags which is your basic tag mm -hmm. then you got that's throws. just like your name whatever. yeah that's yeah. just a quick name real right. fast then you got thoughts it's kind of like bubble letters that you can see it bigger <laughs> then you got pieces so and, and and then you got burners so it's kind of like that's a hierarchy so what's a burner a burner is when you use multiple colors and you throw an outline and an aura and 3D and have, you know, background and foreground. So it's about how many layers. Yeah, it's to about it. doing the ultimate. The ultimate is the burner. And then the one right before that the is a piece. Right before that is a piece, and that is just your name. And a basic piece could be like a two-color, three-color fade, but it has an outline and an aura, maybe some bubbles behind it. But when you do a burner, usually burners are on what we call productions, where it's like, five or six guys in there and when there's a bunch of burners and there's also characters and some kind of theme involved like that. So in the order of that though, some of the rules are if you're doing a tag, I can go over your tag with a throw up. That's not disrespect. Okay, so you can add to it. I can go over you, but I gotta fill you out so you don't see you no more. Not really add to it, go total over you. Okay, yeah. so that's not disrespectful that's to go over. That's not disrespectful if you went over them with a throw up. Okay. You like say I went and did a dope ass piece over your throw up. Mm -hmm. That means I didn't disrespect you. Like say you gotta throw up on a train and the train pulls up. I ain't got time to be like, let me go find a cleaner train. No, I gotta right. do that train right there. That's how it was back in the day. You know, that's why the rules come come from back then. And I'm going strictly over you and I'm trying to d cover you by giving you respect by covering all of you so I don't you don't see that no more. But then if somebody does an ultimate burner over my shit then, you know, that's how it is. That's the rules. It, it and just, then the only thing that goes over a burner is a bad, a bad burner, you know, so you got to be. So a lot of people don't go by the rules. I'll just tell you straight up because they're going over me and they can't burn me, you know, but they're going over me. You know? Right. You know, it would take, you know. So hands. it's like. Some of them, I feel like their hands might just fall off with it, you know. Like, Why'd you go over me? You know, y'all fucked up. But it's an era now where everybody wants to paint more and more. Back in the day. You couldn't get on these walls unless you was cold. You know? mm -hmm. I didn't get on them walls for years. It took me a long time. And yeah, now you, I, I see it where like, they'll do like, like some quick gang bullshit or like yeah. not even good. Like you just threw up your name, but like, two I don't colors, know. Yeah, two yeah. Color and you One a lot of colors, times, yeah. yeah. So, you know, which I'd be honest with you though, I love all forms of graffiti and the, the basic, the tag is everything. Your, your whole style, everything is is from the day one tag that you do the the flow of your penmanship you know <laughs> your tag everything stems from that you know it's a language that you guys have to read like learn to read right exactly. like i've seen that where like i've been i used to ride the l a lot uh -huh. and i remember there was this one curve around like maybe in between like belmont and fullerton or something like that uh -huh. and i remember for the longest time somebody just spray painted a big pair of tits. Right. Oh, you remember that? <laughs> no. Uh, That's I awesome, though. Yeah, like, and I just, I was always thinking, and this was a conversation I had with, um, uh, Zeb, again, like I say, yeah. I view you guys as essentially modern-day ninjas because I'm always like, how the fuck did this guy get up there? Yeah. 
that is a real ninja. <laughs> so you don't do those real high pieces and stuff oh, like that? No, I've, I've done that. I've done everything and, and, and everything more than once. And uh, I mean, we rebelled. You know, we, I rode on top of trains. I did all that. I'm just saying, Zeb likes to dress up. With yeah, the old yeah. Ninja mask on and the, the, yeah. the scarf and all that. Be blacked out, you know. Just like I even car hearted out, you know. Right. So like even before he was doing that, I just view it like I'm always thinking like how how do you find these places and get a, and it's like literally you guys are. You see something that you like. There's a way for you to get up there. Other people get up there somehow. And he, he even told me sometimes if you just act like you're supposed to be doing shit, nobody really That's says anything. That's always a great rule to, to act like you're supposed to be there. I learned that one back in the days when you're just doing shit on the street. And it looks like, you know, and like when we doing basic stuff on the street, Nine times out of ten, it's already illegal. <laughs> but I usually, that's why I do characters a lot. I'll pop up a, a portrait of a, a face, you know, of a woman or something. And people go, oh, okay. Then we do all the words and the letters and all that. Then they're not paying attention as much. Right. So it's like ways of getting around everything. So it's like a misdirect for the people. Yeah, you know, we put Scooby-Doo up. Oh, the kids, yeah. Right. And then, bam, we come with a hardcore graffiti next to it, you know. What do you think it is that drew you into urban art because i i feel like people like you who are you know such talented artists you probably could have picked up a paintbrush and did things a little bit different but that's not what drew you it's not that you don't respect that style of art yeah i mean i i, I pick up the paintbrush and get down too and i'm a huge uh fan and uh he, of art styles and uh different shit like abstract arts and you know uh cubism and you know i like you know, I go and I go to museums, and I, I do enjoy it. That's why I'm a graffiti nerd, because I am an artist. Okay. I get down with the brush. I get down with an airbrush. I get down with all forms of art. But my first love and passion is graffiti art, and I just think it's from being a hip-hopper in the funnest times of my life, <laughs> break dancing and, and graffiti and making beats and cutting and scratching. I mean, if you ain't never really cut and scratched, in front of somebody at a hip hop underground basement ass party that's about to get shot up, you never even felt that feeling in your in your body and knowing what a real hip hop jam is or a real hip hop shit is. You know when you know when I used to love to to do like DMC battling type shit, okay, you know, tricks and shit on the table. And I grew up by the Riviera in Uptown, and that's where <laughs> all the DMC battles came. I came and watched all of them. I seen all the dope DJs growing up. I didn't know you was from behind, behind, the, behind the stage watching them and and learning and, and seeing it and stealing records from the rib, you know, and <laughs> stealing turntables, all that shit. You know, we stole our first set of of twelve hundreds, you know, and and it's fucked up. But how else were we gonna get some twelve hundreds when we were right. eighteen years old? I grew up um, a bunch of my family. My parents actually met in forty eight, forty eight. Oh, okay. See, like right. I forty eight, forty eight. Now I, I threw parties in forty eight, forty eight. Every week. Now, your parents might have been there. <laughs> we got raided one time. This is a funny story. We got raided. I'm the only white dude always, the only white dudes, all folks, you know. <laughs> and they're like, we're not going to pay you, but you can sell weed. So we DJing, cutting and scratching, and selling dime bags at the same time behind the turntable. That's a fair deal you know, almost. I mean, I ain't going to lie. It was a great deal. And I was also, I got to sell on their block on Winthrop. Yeah, you know, without them know, stomping you out and shit like that. Out, you know, I, I you know, this was before everybody was selling weed. There was only a few people that selling right. weed. And uh, the police raided it, bam, took all my equipment and shit, arrested us, took us to jail. And while we're in the thing, they're going through all my albums, just throwing shit out. You better not damn. have fuck the police. Better not have. There it is. Fuck the police. Came in there, swacking us in the head with the records and shit. Uh, you know, <laughs> fucking with us. Long story short, man, we went to court. Me and my buddy Doug and my brother Rick and... uh. We tripped on acid, man. We went to go and on acid. We dropped some acid, yeah. It was a bad, <laughs> bad move. Bad move. We dropped some acid, but it was real talk, right? We were on a real talk. Right, show. right. So we, we and my mom was there, and she was like, "What is wrong with you, motherfuckers?" <laughs> like, so what? After, we got kicked out of the courtroom, man, because we're just cracking up. Because you're all doing, fucking acid. At everything. But I still beat the case, you know. Uh, what I, was the charge? It was uh, stolen equipment. Was your equipment? St- it was well, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, you did. But they had no proof for that. that yeah. Shit, but they had like, it looked like it was stolen. Like shit was bent up and shit like that. Uh, it's so not what you know. Beat. It's what you can prove, right? Yeah. So it's crazy though. They they I beat the case and I and they said I can get all my shit back and they sent me to some weird ass warehouse 
And they brought my shit, man, my Technique 1200s, man. Arms bent over, man. I'm talking about the police. Went Did it seem like shit. they intentionally yeah, fucked it up? Fucked yeah, they fucked my shit up. Yeah. Probably at the station before they even Right. Because they was fucking with all my records. They bent all that shit up, man, and fucked up my first turntables. And that's what made me get, start get back into more graffiti instead of DJing for a while. Because you, know? you would have had to crazy. go and steal a new probably set. I still would have been spinning. I probably would have been making some money by now. You know, <laughs> and now I got back into all that. Fuck these guys. Main reason why a lot of writers do graffiti because... We get injustice, man. You know, we got to go out there and take it out on the streets and be like, fuck these police. You know? a, a lot of it seems to be the voice of the streets, but imagery. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I respect about street art. Like, I, I've interviewed guys who do fine art, too, you know, mm -hmm. but... And I, I, that's that's the terminology that artists put on it. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't view one, you know, more or less than the other, as you can see from the different pieces we got in here. Um, and also, that back door, I don't know. We think something should go on it. Maybe oh, we can brainstorm. Oh, okay. Maybe oh, we can no, brainstorm. I'm, I'm always down, down for that. Yeah, ain't no brainstorming. I mean, I just come and do Freestyle. it. Freestyle? I don't, you know, I haven't drew it out and planned something out for a long time, except just recently when I just... Uh, did the uh, the tribute to uh, MF Doom. I actually mm -hmm. took a little time and drew it out, you know, just to, you know, make sure I did it respectfully and, and did it up to par because dude, dude was meticulous in his art and, and, and his uh, his imagery of himself. So I didn't want to put something up there that really wasn't him, you know, and I wanted to have that respect and, and honor him in the right way. Um, we actually, we were doing a podcast before this and we were talking about um, MF Doom and just the impact that, you know, a lot of these guys, the old school had on the culture. And where do you view it? Where did we get away from that? Man, uh, <laughs> that's a great question because we actually did get away. And I mean, that's kind of why I think I fucking really dug Doom because he kept it there, you know, mm -hmm. and there's only a few artists that kept it there. Well, basically, I think we got away because of, you know, Instagram and uh, social media and shit. Facebook first, probably. And, you know, just seeing shit pop up quick shit got so popular music musically, too. You know, you know, I, I can't remember who said it. I think it was Mary J. Blige that stuck with me in my head that she's like, people do popcorn songs. They put it in the microwave and it comes out in three minutes and it's done. And it's a motherfucking hit. You know, people ain't putting a lot of... Uh, dope energy into their craft and a lot of shit and, and it kind of it fell off with the graffiti too a lot of people weren't trying to burn no more they just was like i'm gonna get up and do this basic one and do the same style over and over and you know even with art you know some of the street art people that were doing characters they do the same one over and over and it's kind of like it's not hard and they're not trying to like push themselves hard as artists but they're doing something that might make them some money you know? right People see it every day, like they see in the uh, McDonald's Golden Arches. You know they're gonna make that money from it eventually. More of advertisement or something in that sense, you know. So, you don't go out of your way to do pieces for the money, but I'm sure you've been commissioned to do murals and stuff like that before. Oh yeah, I've I've been commissioned and I do make money from it, but I also work, you know, in. I'd rather get away from working for a while, but I mean, I work with youth. I, right now I'm working with homeless youth, and I always worked with the youth my whole life and worked at different non-for-profit organizations, teaching graffiti art, teaching art, you know, and mentoring, you know, I've always been a mentor. But I would have liked to have been just paid off my art, but I never really took it that serious and that far in that sense. But, you know, uh, but I always, you know, the art was kind of more about, the graffiti art is more about for us, the writers and stuff like that. But I also do these murals that are more for like everybody, you know, something more beautiful, you know, butterflies, you know. And I'm gonna make sure to go through, through like your Instagram uh, as, so people can see yeah. as you speak. So I'm gonna I, loop I just that like over. I like to do it all. I like to cater it all. I like to do portraits. I like to, but I, and I like to do hardcore graffiti. And then on top of that, you know, as a real graffiti crew being in part of that, I still do real graffiti, you know, I still do. What, what does that mean, real graffiti? You know, illegal graffiti, you know, mm -hmm. you know, out there in either an abandoned building doing a bandit art or doing a CTA train or mm -hmm. doing a freight train, something that you're not allowed to do. How many trains do you think you've done in your life? Uh, I'm not big on putting the numbers on shit. Mm -hmm. 
But I've done a lot more than a lot, and I've done less than some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I've done a lot in every decade. I've done some in every decade. Okay. Four decades, pretty much. And I've been painting uh, three decades, I'd say, over 30 years. And, uh, you know, I, I, get, I still get them in here and there. Would you call I, yourself a master of your craft? Uh, no. I, I don't feel like I mastered it yet. And a lot of shit I do, I don't even know how I did it. And I'm like, how the fuck did I do that? And where did it come from other than a dream? You know, a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of shit I wake up like, man, what was that? That shit was dope. Who painted that? And I'm like, wait a minute. That's in my head. I did that. You know, that's in my brain somewhere, you know? I've noticed that with artists like, uh, for example, my guy, uh, b -Land, who did the booth. Mm -hmm. Like, I just told him, I want some shit that's Chicago as fuck. Yeah. And then he just let him freestyle. Yeah, I was like, wow, that's cool. Yeah. Right, like, that's and... It's, it's, you know, like a form of, uh, you know, like you're flowing, like you're rapping. Freestyle, Freestyle. To me is the fun part of the sport. Mm -hmm. I know no matter what, I'm going to do something raw because I got the skills and I got the artillery and my memory banks to come out with. I got a hundred styles that I just take three from there, three from there, some from the 80s, some from the 90s, and I add it all together and put it together. It's going to be dope when I'm done. You know, that's how I look at it, you know. But sometimes we go in with a sense of, Okay, we're gonna come here. It's gonna be for the kids. You know, I gotta come a little softer with this, that, and that. You know, and then that I might actually draw it up or something. Have you uh, traveled to with the sole intent of doing oh, urban yeah. art? Yeah, I mean that's the, you know, kind of what I'm probably gonna do more with the rest of my uh, life is just keep traveling more and doing it. There's graffiti events everywhere, all other countries too, but. I've been all around the U.S., you know, Memphis doing some, St. Louis does a big one, or Colorado does one. They all do them, and they're all like, I swear, they're just the super coolest thing because the, the community of writers, when you're from out of town, they treat you great. Mm -hmm. They don't know shit about how dope you are or nothing, how fresh you are. You don't know nothing about them. It's just the love you get in a... Uh, mutual respect. Yeah, the mutual respect, and... You're seeing these other artists that are busting out paintbrushes and then back in the day, you'd be like, man, get your whack ass out of here with that paintbrush. You know, or bringing out tape. You know, we came up different. But now I just love it. And it's, you know, there's this younger people and um, uh, women artists and then just a just community of artists. And then, then when you travel more, it's always like, hey, you're in Memphis. Oh, it's going to be free barbecue. And you got that. <laughs> it's going to be a dope underground DJs and dope underground right. rappers. So, uh, you know, you keep your, your feeling of the rawness of everything, you know? And and, and just, I just, I just think hip hop is just, uh, it's brought me everywhere, you know? Like, I, I've been, I can't even remember where I was at, but I went somewhere and then out of the blue, it was a fucking, um, it was like a TikTok battle, like, you know, and people were, and this was about 10 years ago, and I'm like, damn, I didn't even know people still was up. Like, a, like pop yeah, pop, yeah, okay. I'm like, people pop locking this shit, and it was all little kids, and like, it just blew me away, and I was just like, man, this shit just, you know, it's just worldly, you know. I, th I feel like, yes, we talked a little bit about, like, how we lost some things, but, like, to a degree, there's also everything that we may think we lost, we may have, is that you or me? Yeah, that's me. I'm sorry. Nah, he good. It's, we're not live, so it don't make a difference. Um, but like even battle rap, for example, you probably remember people actually battling on the corner, you know, under the L and Uptown and shit I, like I that. Lie. That shit's weird to me. Like when they're rapping now, that's how we used to just crack on each other, you know. Like, but you know how they do the rap, the battle. Yeah, they do the yeah. yeah they're, 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 like or like a mixtape. The mixtape with me was mixing. Right, this right. You gotta stay on beat with this beat, and mm. then the tape goes nonstop without stopping the music. Yeah, that's not at all what a mixtape is like anymore. anymore. So yeah, that's a big difference, and and that's just big on like not learning that people not learning. I was already gonna mixtape. How y'all rename this shit a mixtape? Right, like um. Uh, house music yeah. house music got changed into like EDM and shit at some yeah. point and that's not what it was and initially I, I grew up as a house DJ first right like house, I played three hours of house in, at a party and then DJed hip hop for like one minute and, and before it changed into I was one of the younger guys that started that bringing in hip hop in the parties <laughs> and shit like that and had some of the biggest hip hop parties in the late 80s and, and came out with some dope hip hop uh 
people like I don't know if you ever heard of Dim Dare. You ever heard of Dim Dare? Not familiar. Big hip hop movement in the late nineties, man. You know, a dope artist named Regnock. He did all the hip hop flyers and um, you know, he did like dope B boy characters and B girls and like you know, um, uh, let me think of Twilight Tone. I, I, he's one of the DJs, you know. I remember hearing yeah. Twista say he had to learn to rap over house because it's not like. Oh, that like... makes total sense for Twista. And, uh, and, and people rapped on house when I was a kid. Right. Was, people were rapping on that shit. And house music had cutting and scratching. I learned right. how to scratch over house, so that's why I could scratch real fast. Right. Bing, bing, bing. You know? the, the, it, it's, a, it's a much faster pace than yeah. shit with the house music, right? And that's, yeah, that's dope. I, that makes total sense for Twister's ass to be doing that. Yeah, why he, like, even his whole style developed the way that it did because yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, so, do you have, like, urban artists that you're you're a fan of? Uh, like other graffiti artists, or yeah. street artists, other street artists yeah, that like, you like all these pins on my head. You know, these are all like the new different like, artists, dope street artists out there. You know, I support. You know, all these dudes, the Bird, Sid Rock. You know, Bird Milk. You know, okay, a lot of different Kawhi Sugar. We got Cosmo. You know, we got Matter. You know, all these guys. They, you know, they're always. You know. They always been fun, mm -hmm. you know. I, I would say, you know, going to paint with some of them is different than what I'm used to going to paint with graffiti writers that have been like, you know, hardcore and all about the letter structure and all about which I I love too. But these guys are all about like characters, mm -hmm. you know, a lot and and animated and visual and popping and and poppy, you know. And I'm I'm big in animation and cartoons mm -hmm. and all that. So I love the, the the street art scene too. A lot of writers. Is over here hate hate the street artists, you know. Oh, they're making all the money, this, that, and that. You know, I'm like, hey, make your money, do your thing. Right. I like that shit. Represent, you know. And then there's some writers that do both. I like to dab on both too. You know, I like to do a little bit of that and a little bit of stickers. Stickers is huge. It's a whole. I don't know what stickers. Stickers like a regular fucking. Oh, just. On the wall, man. Oh, it's you like, know I have that's seen them. Bigger than graffiti, man. That shit's the biggest shit. Like ever. where they'll just write their name on it. Yeah, they'll tag day. their you name and they just. On a sticker. I right. Mean, all around the world, there's millions and millions and millions of stickers being traded online in the mail. It's it's a big it, adhesive. It's a. It's probably bigger than graffiti. It probably got more following than straight up graffiti artists. Are used to. I didn't realize that. You know, like we, we paste in it's another thing too. You know, it's all subcultures of a culture. You know. Right, right. So, what would you say is the most challenging aspect of getting a piece done properly? Uh, let's see. Challenging. I I think a challenging aspect. You know. Getting a piece done, I would say more of a challenge is like doing a whole production where you got like five or six artists that come to do something together. That's kind of a challenge, and I think that's only done in like the graffiti world. I think we're the only artists that let five or six other artists that you never kicked with ever, hey, come get on my canvas and get on my painting <laughs> and do this shit. And do it live outside, you know, in front of people. So it's like entertainment art. Live in front of you. Live right. artists like to be in their little little hole in the wall, you know. Right. Hey, don't look at my shit too. It's done. Cover it up. Right. We out there in the limelight, spraying, going crazy. Police might get shot at. We you know we're in all these different neighborhoods. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, growing up, I would say some of the hardest things of putting a piece up was you know not getting locked up. You know that was just huge. And there was crews beefing, right? Yeah, gangbang, you got to make it through this neighborhood to go get a piece over here because you're beefing with this crew. You got to go over them, but they also got their whole gang out there. Right. That, that, that are their cousins and shit that you got to watch out for. So, you know, it's, it's, that's not a lot like it was back in the day, but that was a big thing. I didn't even realize how big it was until a dude that I knew was in that world. Literally, you might even remember the story. It ended up on the news like maybe 10 years ago. Got stabbed on like Western or something, and it was over a graffiti beef, but they had caught each other in traffic or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, I was like, oh shit. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. like gang shit. Like it, I didn't. It is, and it's not all the way there. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that are in gangs that still got love for graffiti too. That kind of keep it separate themselves too. Right. But they also do both. And then you know it's just you know, I mean, our form of graffiti wouldn't even exist without gangbang graffiti. I would never say like, hey, that's weak at gangbang. That's some of my favorite graffiti. I can't even front. <laughs> you know, as a kid, and even in Uptown, 
man, it was big as gang murals growing up, and I was like, oh wow, this is crazy, you know. It was, and like me being stupid as a younger free rider, I went over some gang banging shit, and the whole hood was looking for me, and I didn't realize <laughs> what I did was so wrong, and I had to get taught that lesson, you know, the old school thing in your ass. Well, let's teach them a lesson. That was a real thing, you know. Right. That's why we okay. We got taught a lot of lessons growing up. A lot of these kids ain't getting taught a lesson no more. They ain't getting fucking punched in the face and shit like right. that, you know. And I mean, shit like that just make you stronger and make you survive, you know. And I know I'm saying I got my ass whooped a lot. I barely did. But I got into a lot of scuffles where I learned a lot of motherfucking lessons. And how to, Getting punched you know, in the yeah. face is a humbling experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it. Same thing when people say, hey, you know, how to fucking skateboard, I was like, Fall on your ass a few times, and then you'll then you'll learn how to skateboard. Learn how to fucking fall, and how to fall and get hurt. You know? That those worlds kind of cross over too. Oh it, yeah, yeah, skating's the shit. It, it seems like it's all um, people who are just opposed to the system. Like yeah, fuck your rebels. rules. Yeah, yeah, rebels, you know, fuck it. No, I don't know if you know. I got. Uh, I opened a skateboard shop 14 years ago in Uptown. It's still there. Yeah, I still know that. Ghetto hood shop. Dirty. It's tagged up. It's wrecked. If you could survive that bathroom, you could survive anything. It's just <laughs> killed in there. You know, and it's just called Wilson Yards. It's named Wilson after, Yards. It's named is after the Wilson Yards that was burnt down in the uh, early 2000s that they burnt down where they used to have a train barn there where they used to clean trains and take the graffiti off. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just a core skate shop, man, where... Kids come and we keep extra wheels around. It's just a shop for the hood, you know, and then it's on Wilson. So they got the Wilson Skate Park down there too. And they got Wilson Skate Teams. They got Uptown Skate Teams and shit, you know. So you said that you rode a train before. Yeah. What was that like? I mean, you know, we did all that shit. I mean, it was kind of like... Uh, How the fuck did you get on top of the train? Passage. Just climb up there, man. You can get up on it. You know, we used to go in the middle of them to climb up the train. Mm-hmm. The trains to get out. I mean, I wrote. I got. I'm. I, I'm on some footage, man. Right now, on top of a bus, man, from the '90s. <laughs> and you look when you get a chance when the Bulls won the, the first. Uh, thing, this, you know, the, yeah, and, their first you know, championship. We were killing these buses, and we got on top of the buses. We we're up there break dancing. But you on know, top of the bus as yeah, it's moving. Yeah, as it's moving and shit. You know, Rush Street going down. It, it took us a long ass way. We couldn't get off. We had to kick in the top, and then we jumped inside the bus and came out the bus. Are you guys? Uh, to some degree, adrenaline junkies. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's what I was gonna say. It's, it's a sport too. When 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 you saying climbing up to them high spots, you know, rooftops. I mean, right. I did mad rooftops and rollers, and it's a sport, man. You know, going out at night and running trains and running from station to station, and you know, like when you're doing the tunnels and a train comes, you might be doing it. You got like 15 seconds to get to this little room before you get mm-hmm. crushed and shit like that. And then it's also the third rail, man. Ain't nothing bigger adrenaline than right. dancing on the third rail. And you're on there skipping around. I got pictures as a kid laying down on it. You know, as long as you're not grounded, you know, you do stupid shit like that. And a lot of people did die. And a lot of people did get electrocuted, you know. Right. When I was a kid, a kid pissed on the third rail. And the electricity the street, yeah. killed him. He yeah. didn't realize how that yeah. shit worked. Killed him, yeah. That is fucked. That's got to be a right salty right. way to go. That sucks, man, yeah. What do you think your favorite piece that you've done ever has man, been? Man, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, I I want to say, man, I one of my favorite pieces I've done because I could remember it being one of my first, but it was actually my second piece on the line, and uh, and it was freezing outside, and I was in Uptown, and it was an old store called Z Wallace, and there's GGO's Pizza right there, so mm-hmm. I went up GGO's Pizza. In the back porch, and I and I had to hang jump, maybe about you know two floors. Like it was a long ass fucking hang jump, <laughs> and it was ice. It was uh, it looked like snow. I thought it was gonna be uh, soft, but it was snow. But it was ice on covered rail. on top, man. Oh. And I fucking hung jump, and I went in there, and I kind of was in there, and it was like hard ass ice. Like, man, I was crushed in that motherfucker, you know. Man. But it was one of my first things, and uh, and uh, this guy went with me, and his name was Vito, old school cat. And he was doing one side of the wall, and I was doing one side of the wall. And the train riding by, you know, and it's uptown. It's crackhead screaming and yelling. And people getting pizza out of GGO's. It's like open late night, two or something in the morning. So, you know, I'm witnessing all that, and all the sounding is right. You know, and I I did, like, my first nerd piece. I did these two stiff-ass characters. 
and uh, one of them had a gold chain and shit, you know, and uh, one of them had a cell phone. This was like uh, with, with the brick phones. Yeah, brick phone. This was like 1987 or 88, <laughs> something like that. It had a brick phone, so you know it was way beyond the time with the phone. But you know, it was one of my one of my greatest uh, memories of doing something. You know, a piece like that. Probably I I don't have a picture of it, and I, it was something I always wish I had a picture of. But probably uh, one of the wackest things I ever did too. You know. Okay. But, but that's why I like it. So but it was much, one of your favorites. Because you know? to me, being whack is the funnest time ever. Once I started getting good, which was probably like only a couple of years ago. I started getting good, you know, people start hating you more. You know, being whack, you get invited more to things. Now mm. you're like a threat. Oh, I'm not inviting that motherfucker. He's gonna, you know, I, my shit don't even look right next to his. That's you know? ego, though. You know, that's how people are. And what, well, what I like to do is like whoever I paint with, I kind of combine what they doing with what I'm doing, mm. you know, and get Make it inclusive. Kind of like when Biggie got up with like Bone Thugs and them and mm -hmm. did his Bone style. You know, I'll do your style you that. with my shit. He killed them in their own style. And that's what I like to do too. Exactly, yeah. Um, and there's probably bone stands that are gonna hate the fact that you just said he killed exactly. them in their own style. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But that's how it is. You put the wrong MC on your motherfucking album, and he kills you on your own motherfucking track, which happens a few people, you know. And it just shows, and that that's that realness, though, you know. I feel like in everything like ego plays a role because that's not that shit doesn't bother me it doesn't make a difference that some people that listen to this podcast are only gonna come because it's you and they're never gonna listen again un unless they feel like I got another urban artist or something right, like that right. um, but I don't care about that right you don't care yeah. like it, it's fine with me I have podcasters do my podcast I don't like I'm I, shout out your podcast yeah, hell yeah, yeah. like well, you wanna switch shit up so yeah. that's kinda your approach to the graffiti world mm -hmm. uh, that I like that I can respect now X-Men uh -huh. what exactly is your relationship with the X-Men crew uh, I'm, I'm the, right now I'm the uh, the vice president of the crew of the Chicago chapter of the crew so we've got other chapters but mainly it's Chicago and New York okay so no wet like West Coast just completely different crews and stuff like that we got we got individual um, Factions. artists, but not a whole mm. lot of crews out there. Okay. Yeah, we got people in Singapore, you know, but we ain't got a whole crew in Singapore. Right. You know? And then how do you guys create these? Like, I see X-Men tags and shit like uh, that, and like I didn't even know that was you. Mm -hmm. Um You got, do you design, as an artist, you got a couple tattoos. Do you design your own tattoos? No, I'm 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 more of a supporter of a tattoo artist. If I'm gonna go to a tattoo artist, I want their style of tattoo right. on my shit. I wanna see their art, you know. Right. That's their job. I'm gonna do half their job and I'm paying them to do the job. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I get. I see you got a couple X Men like, tattoos. But, but I would say I would say with the crew sense, mm -hmm. a lot of times we got fifty plus people in the crew. Oh They're shit! All cold, you know. You, in you, Chicago, you gotta be a certain level to get in the crew. For one, right. it's not like anybody could just. Join. It's invite only. Yeah, and it's only getting in if 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 I'm the final word to tell you the truth. You're not getting in if I don't want you in for sure. And the one other brother, which is severe, which is the, the president, the pres, yeah, okay, the school is severe. You know, he's the pres. That's the boss man. So. You're not gonna get in if any of us got a conflict, and if anybody in the crew got a conflict, it's got to be squashed or something first too. Right. And you know we only take we don't even take on a lot of people. You know how do you guys decide? Well, it it would be like since we got so many people, like we, let's I'm gonna give you an artist for example. Uh, we just let this brother matter in. Okay. And uh, I mean, dude's cold. You know, he, he's super cold. And we recognize the talents, and we know he's dope. And we see to be an X Men, you gotta be streetwise. We want you know you ain't gotta do it all, but we want to see at least that you know how to bomb. A bomb is a, you gotta be a, either if we're letting an old schooler in the crew, you had to be a bomber back in the day and got up and did your thing, been chased, locked up, beat down, all that shit. You know, un, understand it. But to be somebody young, you gotta be doing that shit right now, and you gotta be getting up. You got to be just like, hey, I'm going to have X-Men up everywhere, da 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 Or if you're just such a cold, super dope artist, you're going to jump on these productions with us and do these raw-ass characters <laughs> and shit like that. You know, which 
we've been we were blessed to get somebody like Matter, which does super dope portraits and character. Cole with the paintbrush, just a dope artist, but also a straight up bomber. You know what I'm saying? That's what we want. So what exactly may, is a bomb? A bomb, when you see that, like you said, you see X-Men everywhere. Right. That's bombing. Right. You see the name in different illegal spots. Right. On the trains, way up high on the roofs, you know, on the freight trains, inside the bandit buildings, all, you is, know, on the streets, little tags. That's bombing. Is there conflict between different crews unnecessarily? Yeah, there's always conflict. Because you know? I see CMW all, you know, and shit, and that's an, another old school crew, right? Yeah. So I would figure because you guys are both old school crews, there would be some level of respect between the two. Oh, there is a big time respect between us two. Okay. Yeah. But, and, uh, but not to say we couldn't get into an argument and be mad. I actually battled CMW back in 1990 when I was in a crew called Wet Crew. And there was CMW and it was AOK, All Out Kings. Okay. And I did like rollers all over, flipping them. So we battled back in the days and I got into a lot of scrapes and fights with half of the people in that crew. When I see them today, best of friends. It's all love, right? Everybody, that, I love everybody to this day. If I'm still seeing you, you're still alive, that's big to me, you know? Right. Because a lot of people ain't still alive where I'm from and a lot of people ain't make it this far. Right. And that's the same reason why I keep painting, because. I'm painting for all the people that know what I'm about and what I grew up doing and all the shit I've been through and lived through and I'm still here and people tell me every day, man, I can't believe you still do this shit. I love to see you still doing this shit. You know, I bump into people like I go to Uptown, I go to GGOs and get a slice of pizza. I see oh, somebody ain't seen me in 20 years and be like, man, you still doing that shit, man? Right. Oh, yeah. You know, it's all the time, you know, and it's just, you know, I, I, I like the form of re the respect of it I get from people and how the art has changed a lot of people. And it, they, you know, it's, hey, you've been a big influence to me. Some of the guys in the crew now, I met when they was 12 or 13, or like I met Zeb when he was 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. And I had him in classes with us, teaching graffiti art through Kumba Links and getting them into programs and getting them, getting them thinking about going to college and then getting them into, you know, art colleges and getting other kids into art colleges and taking them on trips to other states and, freestyle battling people and poetry and all that shit. Yeah. And because you did that with him, that's probably what has him doing that now yeah. with younger cats it's now. Like the guy that taught me before right. him with a guy named Zorro and Raven, you know. We're both, me and Zeb, we're from their crew, which is SB, Spray Brigade. Okay. And they taught kids when they were younger, when they, when they uh, back in the day, and then they, I learned how to do it, how to come up, how to teach them, how to get grant money for free paint. You know, I ain't paid for a pa can of paint ever in my life. No oh, shit. Paint my whole life, and they got a stash out of this world always, you know. And I'm not trying to say that as bragging, but that's part of the game. Right. You know? Another big part of the game was I stole all my shit. I yeah, I was just about life. to say how much of that shit <laughs> did you, you steal? Steal all your shit in the beginning. I, <laughs> man, I had an art store. My parents would come home like, "What the fuck," you know? And I'd be like, "Well, you know, the art teachers are hooking me up because I was also an art student. I was right. hustling art teachers. I was in art programs. I was getting." Funded from them, still in their projectors, doing whatever I can. When you know? did spray paint become illegal in Chicago? Man, I think uh, that's a good question. I, I could sit back, remember doing a piece like saying, give us our paint back. I think it was like 91, 92. Up until then, like you could buy it and shit. Yeah, like, man, you could buy that shit right on the street of Uptown, man. I'm Wilson and Broadway right there at Walgreens at Woolworth. They had it in the basement of Woolworth. Hardware stores, yeah, all that shit, right? Yeah, Sears. I used to rack up at Sears. I never bought a can, so I couldn't really tell you that you could buy it, but... You know, you <laughs> they were know? for sale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we had... we Man, racking was... A, that was bigger than even painting. And me being white, man, and, you know, I would always be the only white guy at school, you know? i take, like, six cats down, downtown with me. i fucking steal everything for all of us. Jabos, clothes, you know? <laughs> fucking hats, you know? I... They give the people who watch all them like right. watch all of my black homies in Puerto Rican cats or whatever. They're watching them like they're still in. I'm over there, <laughs> looking like a straight up preppy kid. Didn't know polo out and shit, you know. Still in for everybody. Still in for the whole crew, you know. Uh, Dave Chappelle got a funny joke like uh, you know that makes me think about what you just said. Like you always need that one crazy white guy in the crew. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> and that sounds like that was you. Yeah, I mean, it was 2%, it was 2% white at my school, me and my brother. You know, mainly at Sin High School. We went okay, to yeah, so shit, like, um, yeah, a bunch of my 
old like cousins and brothers and shit uptown and went to sin and shit back in the day. Yeah. Um, Bulldogs. Fuck it. I went to Mather, so for yeah. me it's fuck sin. But yeah. like, <laughs> um, but yeah, I I think that what you guys do is so fucking. I like almost anything that challenges the status quo. Mm -hmm. And I think that you guys have um, just the entire lifestyle of it is a rebel lifestyle, very similar to, like we said, with the skateboarders. Um, And like you said, to some degree, there is a little bit of adrenaline junkie shit going on there. What do you get? What do you think? How do you think we could get more of you guys to communicate with? I feel like there's so many different people who are also looking for ways to challenge the system, but might not necessarily be artists. I, I'm doing that. It, you know, I have a conspiracy facts podcast and mm-hmm. I've seen how they blacklist motherfuckers and shit yeah. like that on social media and shit like that. How do you think we can combine these people who may be podcasters, may be artists, may be activists in their community? How do you think we can bring it home collectively for all of us to kind of get on the same page, at least with each other. I think what Chicago is missing right now, and like, and that, that can cater to that is, is and what I had in, in, is like community centers, man. Like, man, you know, we need a whole building. We right. need a whole building that, that is open to artists to come through and open minds to come through. And where we got computers, printers, and, dark room set up. We need something that's an outlet for these guys that they know, oh, this is a safe space to come in here and learn from other uh, mentors and to learn how to do this shit, you know? Like, I'm big at teaching, you know? Anybody that sees me painting at the wall, I'm showing them how to, you know, do certain things. And I'm not afraid to to give out my tricks of the trade and and give you some free jewels, Mm -hmm. but I'm only gonna give it to you, you know? I'm not gonna, hold your hand and do it, you know, but right. we'll show you how to do this shit, you know, here and there. But we need we need community centers, man. We ain't got that no more, I don't think. You know, and then like for instance, we just had a spot called Campus that was a store that we held all the graffiti art shows there, like when they had shows that came to town, like the Meeting of Styles, you know, we had the shows there and we, we sold spray paint there on illegally on the low. And uh, you know, it was a place in the back where you could come and practice and it was a wooden train to come paint on and kids would come and get down and we had another wall for them to play. So it was a place for them to start and try. And even though I I was there for three years that I was there uh, before before the owner passed away and we, we had to shut down. Before he passed away, you know, we started a lot of artists' careers. You know, people had nowhere. They didn't. Some cats don't even know where to get no spray paint. You know, they don't want to order it online because the police could come to your grill. Right. right? They track, track all that shit. So you either got to go to the suburbs. So we're in the city. You know, that's why I got to say big up to the, you know, the underground paint sellers out there now that are, you know, picking up pallets and selling paint to these guys, you know, because, yeah, it's illegal here. But it's illegal. But the people that are buying the paint and shit are amazingly the ones that are doing beautiful art and shit. Right. You know? The legal shit is the shit you go get for a dollar and shit. You know? Right. And Markers and shit, and shit like shit that. Around. Yeah, you know. But the colorful bright shit, people are trying to do murals and trying to do work, you know, and trying I, to do shit. Now, I guess some murals are illegal because... I've seen them literally sandblast fucking or like yeah. blowtorch or some shit. Yeah, like, sandblast. Yeah, sandblast fucking murals off of fucking. And it was just like, who, who the fuck was that bothering? You know yeah. what I'm saying? I highly doubt the business owner was like, no, nah, get that shit the fuck off my, you know, like. It'd be one person in the community hit that alderman's office and it's a wrap. And, and it's just that simple. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, that's a hard thing in Chicago and what we're missing too. We don't got murals that have longevity. Right. You know, when we grew up, we seen murals that were painted in the 70s that were real powerful, you know, big fists and, you know, power to the people type shit. And, like, you go to Pilsen, you see dope-ass Mexican art murals and shit like that. 
that probably lasted to about the 90s and then after that you know there's a few i'm not saying there's none right now, there's some dope ones still but there was a lot man and it was a lot of community dope centers and stuff that did that kind of art and you almost have to get commissioned by the owner of the building for it to oh, stay, yeah. stay up yeah that's true yeah, right yeah um, and maybe there's a way we could, you know, collectively do a push to start getting building owners to, you know, like, yeah. hey, let it look, you got this big ass blank fucking wall here. Yeah. Let us brighten that shit up. Just tell us what you which, don't which want. There's a lot of people doing it nowadays and, and, and hooking it up. You know, there's not a lot I would say that are giving it out to the youth. There's more people giving it out to artists that are kind of known. Right. You know? But which is cool, too, is bringing a lot of art hard into the city but it also makes the youth want to work toward that you know like maybe you know after i do this for a couple of years they'll start to commission me see that it's possible to actually make money and have a career in art you know, right which is great too yeah. uh i do feel like that whole struggling artist thing is a thing you know yeah. um and one of the things that we're looking to start doing with a couple of our um, friend, uh, friends at the network, uh, my homie b Len Artistry, my guy B-Hawk, they're both um, going to be leading some paint and sips here. That's one of the things that we want to start doing. Have you ever done, like, paint and sips, those type of events where you... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a thing you've, like, hosted I, and shit I, before? I, I'm more a paint and puff. Okay, yeah. okay. I would definitely allow that to happen here, but... All these vents and shit go wow. straight up into the offices upstairs. Oh, sure. Yeah, so that's the only reason. Like the owner's fine with it; he don't care. But they run a little businesses upstairs. So, yeah, but I mean, I I love that concept of that, and uh, I mean, that was something I was gonna get bigger into before the COVID had hit. But I I I'm a teacher, you know, so mm. I hosted classes and events like that, and went to colleges and did like took over college classes and did. Um, I forgot what we used to call them, but you know, I would just come and do like events and hold it down for two or three hours. So, you know, I dig that, you know, and I like that. I, I like the concept of the couples coming and doing art. But my thing was I did the graffiti street art atmosphere of it, where I gave out ca uh, canvases and had cut out uh, uh, things to spray paint. Stencils. Stencils mm -hmm. and, you know, I did a little lessons on how to do your name, the basic bubble letter lesson and different stuff like that. and. DJ cutting in old school hip hop and in the back cutting and scratching, you know, shit like that. I like to keep the the hip hop feel right too, you know. If you ever needed a location for something like that, we could definitely set something like that up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We'll do one for sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, nerd. I I like to freestyle these things. I don't. I, I'm not really a yeah. script type of person. I like that too, man. Hell yeah. Um. So. Is there anything that you're working on right now that you want to make sure people are aware of? Or if, for example, one of these business owners or, um, you know, building owners is like, you know what? I have seen this dude shit. Oh, man, I have seen some X-Men shit. Where would these people be able to reach out to you at? Well, right now, the best way to reach me is on Instagram, and I'm Graffiti Nerd on Instagram. <clears throat> and I'm taking on commissions, buildings, taking them on out of state this year. I'm traveling i got a couple of things lined up in different states but also this year i'm actually gonna release like a website and start selling more uh, merch t-shirts hats and pins and stickers and i just i get hit up all the time and i haven't really took the time to really put out products and stuff like that or like made it my main focus. That's yours that you're wearing right now, right? That's like no, this, no, this, that's polo. I'm just oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah. <laughs> okay. But I mean, we I used to be in a crew called Poor Crew, and we always wore polo for the P, you know, mm -hmm. Profit to Rage, Uptown Crew from the '80s and early '90s. But yeah, I mean, I I got certain things and logos, but one of the other bigger things I'm working on is uh, for the past few years i've been uh you know learning how to grow marijuana <laughs> and uh and getting great at that and just just being blessed by being in the garden being a gardener and just like you know taking away all the stress man and it's been great during the covid being in my garden and handling growing all these different strains and learning the different you know techniques and keeping it organic and so my um uh, thing i'm really working on now is me and a partner my, my buddy boar we got a we got a uh, a business called Grow Gardens, and we're gonna be releasing merch with that and uh, 
doing pre-roll blunts and giving away the buds and stuff for free but selling the t-shirt so okay i'm just giving a little bit of that out there now but that's on its way you know and we got to jump in on that i mean chicago we community the money is going crazy you know yeah We're actually out on it you know we got to get in there somewhere and we might not be 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 you know like ever to have a, a spot to sell we even like, yeah because right they, they've kind of create like you lock motherfuckers up for this shit for 30 40 years right. and now like you made it so that fucking some yuppie asshole could they ain't give no minorities no right. spots or nothing you know so you know they're not hooking it up it's always gonna be excuse me street shit going on you know which is always gonna be there too but i want to you know i want to make that a legit company and maybe maybe i'll come out with a soda or something or hopefully my own strand of weed at least some some nerd strand or something you know but you know, we, we, we uh, I, I, I love it. I got a passion for it and I respect it, you know, I, as, as an art form. Mm-hmm. I like taking pictures of the, of the herb growing, you know, the process of it, you know. It's just, hydro or outdoor? Like, how no, you. In dirt. I, I mean, hydro is cool, but I mean, I like just keeping it natural in dirt, mm-hmm. you know, indoor and outdoor, you know. I like it, I like it both, but just keep it organic, not put none of the, none all of the, the, the bullshit, bullshit, fucking pesticides. This yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. The like I, I know that the shit that everybody's getting from the dispensaries, they gotta you know be under all these FDA regulations. So there's probably big money lobbyists that's making sure specific pesticides are used in that shit. Everybody's making money somehow. I mean, there's yeah. billions being made off this shit, man. You know, it's just crazy to me that like y'all locked up all these people for all these years, like. And I've been scared, you know, and I've been locked up plenty of times for weed and got plenty of weed cases and no people doing time. Bids, yeah. Do, like doing football numbers because you got popped in the 90s with like a couple of pounds of weed. Yeah, and like, yeah. I think Joe Rogan said it best. The only way um, weed could kill you is if um, a ton of it fell out of a CIA plane and fell on you. Right. <laughs> like, Yeah, he's big on the weed love. Yeah, yeah you know. and it's like realistically like, you're going to sit here and tell humans who have been fucking with herbs their whole, like, all of human existence the last, like, 100 years or so, nah, y'all can't fucking have this flower. Right. It's, it's still weird to actually think about it as being legal. It's like, right. you know, like what, we, we, we free now? You know, you're still, <laughs> right. still a little scary and shit, you know? Oh, I can grow five plants because I got my card. It's still kind of scared. Are they going to raid my crib? I mean, back in the day, you were scared shitless they would raid your crib. Right. Growing. I didn't, you know, I had kids, so I would never grow at the crib or nothing like that. Right. You would need you a know? fucking completely you, you different know, location. Right? Even though I don't grow at the crib now and I got another location, but still, you could. You right. Know, you can in your backyard if you wanted to. But it's just, you know, it's a different time. And, I mean, I'm driving through the north side, and there's dispensaries on both sides of the street, and there's lines on both sides. It's like... There's like crack lines, like when we used to see the crack lines yeah. in the nineties. Some of them, legal shit, yeah. some of them are you can't even you gotta book an appointment. Like you yeah. can't even fucking just go and it's right. They like oh uh, table for two, okay, come well, on in. You yeah, know? you guys turning like, away money. Like that it's shit crazy. is crazy. That is true. They turning away money, man. They got so much money that they they can tell you when and where to come get you. Right. Like a day be like you need it. Oh, if you don't show up in ten minutes, well, I don't need it. You know, I've, I've been hearing there's like members only delivery services and shit like that now too. I mean, it's huge, you know, in New York and shit like that. They always been on that. Members Chicago, only type yeah. shit, yeah. And there's a lot of like um, after hours kind of smoking mm-hmm. going on. With that's what I'm saying. You know, the black market of weed will always be there too. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because these motherfuckers want to tax and put sales tax and music like. All I, this. I haven't been to a dispensary yet. I couldn't even imagine paying what. <laughs> I don't like to be taxed on ink, man. If we were mad about the soda tax, look, we mad right. about the soda tax was a ten cent, eleven cent. Right. That we tax like twenty dollars, something like that. Yeah, um, you pay eighty, ninety, hundred dollars for an eighth when you can get it out in the street for twenty. You know that that's a big difference. How are you on edibles? Like what? Oh, I, I love it, and I'm I like I like baking and I like cooking. So I mean, you know, I'm. I, 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 I'm just I'm 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 a, I would say you do cook yourself though. Yeah, yeah. I got a gift for you before you leave. <laughs> then. Cool. I I would just say about the edibles is I ha- I've been smoking over thirty years, but I can't man them edibles be having me on my ass. I ain't gonna lie. Like I'm not good at judging how much to eat. I eat a little <laughs> bit and I'm like nah this shit ain't doing nothing. 
And then next thing you know, I'm just like drooling. I prefer the body high as opposed to the head high. Yeah. Um, like the head high, I'm too paranoid and shit like that. Yeah. So I prefer like just to be like yeah, real yeah, relaxed. I just, I just feel like I can't even move. I can't do nothing. You know? One of, Which I enjoy it too if I need to get that way. But, right. But weed, I don't even, I've been smoking so long. I, I haven't been paranoid or nothing for years, you know. I just I don't know if I'm really getting high high, you know. <laughs> yeah, it don't hit you the same it no hit more. Me about one a.m. after smoking 10 all day. day, you know. Then one a.m. I'm like, oh, hold on now, you know. All right, so b- before I wrap up, because you brought up acid, uh-huh. right, and. Th- we don't stray away from conversation. I don't give a fuck what people do. I don't right. judge people. I've had my fair experiences with I've microdosed uh-huh. acid for like fucking 15 days straight right. type shit. And to be completely honest, as a person who I didn't realize until I was an adult dealt with depression, I like I'm, you know, I deal with depression, whatever. This is like it's a thing. It did help. Acid did help. microdosing helped. Um psilocybin mushrooms helped. Like and I know that a lot of people don't want to hear that shit. They're like, oh, motherfucker, yeah, you're that's just... the cheapest vacation you can take, man. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Total Recall? Yeah. Total Recall, man. That's that's the $10 total. I mean, all my, uh, I'm not going to say everything, but I don't wrote books on acid. I done did, you know, graphic novels and shit I work on, shit like that. That's dope. And like, uh, mushrooms, too. And like, I come up with new shit, you know? You, man, it opens you up, man. You, I mean... Yeah, as an artist, I mean, acid is, is a great tool. I don't say say I need it, but, like, you know, sometimes we get to a wall and we got hot water, we make a mushroom tea, mm-hmm. we don't know what we're going to paint. Right. The next thing you know, we came up with something totally new. I mean, that's how we kind of came up with our newest styles, which is the glow styles me and Bord do. We're, we're called the glow gods, and all our paintings the last year or so been this bright neon 80s glow out, you know. So is it with glow in the dark paint? No, it's just... Glow as you see, okay. it's glow on the wall. Is that a thing? Like it's glow in the dark spray? Acid. There is actually, and we actually do use that too. Okay, but that's based off of a light hitting it, and then at night it comes out glowing, mm-hmm. uh, iridescent. I think or something. I forgot. Kind of like how the three M shit, kind of. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. it, it is based with that. So, but when I'm saying glow, I'm saying popping neon, you know, mm-hmm. colors and popping. Uh, it's the uh, vibrancy. Fluorescent, okay. yeah. Fluorescent pinks, oranges, and greens, you know. Okay. Real popping shit. You'll see when you check it out. But, you know, that came from, like, tripping on mushrooms, you know. Like, what you would think about when you're tripping, you know. The, 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 the brightness of the lights and the neon lights in you and, you know, the trails, you know. Shit like that. And the layers of shit and translucent shit in front of shit and shit behind it, you know. When you look at one of my pieces, usually at least five layers, which I like to call the fifth dimension. And usually it's at least five different decades or styles on there. It'd be some shit from the 80s, 90s, mm. shit like that. It'd be behind each other, and you can see it going back. And you gotta, you gotta sometimes pull into my shit and see something in there. It'd be a whole other face or a character. So you know, it's a little bit to my shit. It's, you can stand to look at it. Like most people look at it for a second, and you're gone. Right. You stand to look at my shit for a minute. You know. Is graffiti one of those things like rap where? You'll get lost if you don't adapt with the times. Uh, you know, I could, I would probably say that, but uh, not really, cause like the times right now is the they will bring back the old school shit, like the readable shit is the times right now. Right. You know, or like in the early two thousand, black and chrome was big. Everybody was just doing that, mm-hmm. and that was like going back. Or and sometimes they bring back like eighty styles. But then you got the artists that are like me that are always pushing like the future styles, you know. Don't like those people, they look back at that old shit like, you know, that ain't a challenge to them no more. You know. I've been doing it so long, it's a challenge for me to go back and do that easy shit. That shit's hard for me now. Cause I've been doing this wild style shit so long that so I've been pushing myself, kinda like when they said Jordan couldn't shoot a free throw. Yeah, he could dunk all motherfucking day. But he can't shoot a J or he can't, you know, so George just shot J's all the year to show that he can shoot J's. So I go back and I do throw ups, you know. Okay. And I do that basic shit too to show him that I could do that shit too. Kind of like how High Top Fades shit. came back for a yeah, bit. Yeah, you know, shit, right. exactly, you know, right. especially with hip hop, it's all going to come trend back to right. something, you know. History repeats itself and it's no different with art. Yeah. So you got to push yourself to be on this new cutting edge shit. Like, there is a look to it, like, 
you could do that old school shit and 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 it could look super old and they probably be like oh that looks super old you know look like you using Krylon or you using rusto but when you're doing that old school shit and you got that new paint and you're doing a couple of the new techniques it got that old school shit looking like a like it's on tv hd and a sticker or something you know so nerd um Again, I definitely appreciate you coming sitting down with us. Is there anything that you're working on that you want the people to know about right now? Anything to look forward to from you before, you know, we wrap? I just want to make sure that if you had anything you came here to say today that you wanted to touch base on. Yeah, um, let me see. Let me see. Um, maybe I just want to put something out there as far as, like, um, we were talking about the rules earlier. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, we got access to the internet now, everybody does, you know, and you can see graffiti all day. And I just want to put something out there to the new writer. The first thing you want to always do is be an original. You might not, you know, it's hard to find an original name because there's names all around the world. But if you're going to find an original name first, that's like 90% of the, of the game. And then if you could come out with your own original style, you'll be, you'll be, uh, you'll be recognized and known for that. But you could look around and see all these styles, but don't do exactly what somebody else do. You know, take a little something here and there and be like, I like that. Flip it, turn it around backwards, try it a different way, you know. But, I, I mean, one thing I don't like is the writers that come up, you don't see them doing the basic shit first. You see them just come out doing the crazy-ass wild shit. You ain't got no reason to be trying to do that wild shit yet. Right. Show us that structure. And show us that you respect the game and that you respect the art form and show us that you built your shit up. I'd like to see you come out weak and get better, 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 better and then dig this dope and do that wild shit. Don't come out and be better than me already. That just shows that you stole that shit. Mm -hmm. I don't come out and shit from far away. People are like, oh, that shit nerd shit. Then they get all oh, that ain't nerd, nerd imitation nerd shit. Mm -hmm. You know, doing all that crazy ass shit and wild ass shit that I do. I got the authority to do it because I put in the work. If you didn't put in that work yet, don't come out doing that shit that we do. You see a lot of imitation art? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, and there's people making money off my styles. Oh, and, you shit. Know, it, you know, that would piss me I off. I mean, yeah. being a real hip-hopper and being a real, the culture, biting is was big. Right. Nowadays, rappers bite all day long and make millions. Right. I mean, Jay-Z's the hugest biter ever, I would say. <laughs> no, I mean, no Drake now. Shit, right? Drake now. I mean, you yeah. can name 100 yeah. Jay-Z bite lyric for lyric for lyric for lyric. I mean, they just tried to take... Uh, or cuff your whole style. Yeah, they take everything. Melodies, everything. Right. Same thing with the graph. Mm -hmm. We're doing a crazy-ass pop and glow neon. I invite everybody to glow with me, man. Glow hard. Mm -hmm. Anybody paint with me? Yeah, use that glow. But do your shit with the glow. Don't do my shit with the glow. Do your shit. Make your shit pop with the glow. Make your style glow. Don't do the same shit that I do when somebody says, oh, that's nerd shit. You know, I don't mind if I taught you a couple things and they said, oh... He's, he's doing that shit that nerds do here and there, but but your shit totally different. So people wouldn't even know, really pay attention to that. But when your whole outlook looks like my shit, then you'll never get the respect as a writer, either, right. you know. And the same thing is like if you're a new writer and you come out and say, hey, I'm uh, I'm Cool Rock One, and there's already been like ten Cool Rock Ones, and everybody's like, uh, Cool Rock One is that the one from the '90s or is that the '80s? One? You know, you got to come out with some fresh new original shit, right. you know. Flip your name in Spanish and write write something in German. You know, change it up. Write a number. You know, shit like that. You know, it's too it's easy to be original, and a lot of people ain't taking the time to do it. But I think it's huge in the game. So you're saying build that foundation and build that foundation off of originality. Yeah, and if you say, hey, nobody taught me, seek out somebody that can teach you. Like I said, I, people hit me up every day. I don't even know who. Got no. It could be fake ass. It could be. Uh, Somebody acting like it could be the cops. I don't Man. even know. I'll be like, no, break your wrist, curve that can in, put on this cap, use these caps. I give out the tidbits because why not, man? Why not, man? There's, there's millions of cans of spray paint. Right. It ain't going to go, no, ain't going to run out of paint. There's always going to be canvases, walls, there's millions of walls, and, there, and there's people that come up, man. Somebody's going to be the next phenomenon that's going to come with that original ass style. And, you know, hopefully it's, it's, it's the. It's the new kid that, you know, is taking that shit serious, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you dropped a couple of gems here today. You talked, you told some 
old school stories. You, I'm sure for a lot of people, you gonna there's gonna be so much nostalgia, even especially the way you like bringing up, yeah. even especially the way you like bringing up uptown and everything like that. Um, I can't wait to you know for us to work together. Obviously, I, I definitely got to get a nerd piece in here. This yeah. is obviously a place where we respect arts of all so, different types. So I'll be back for sure. We we definitely gonna have to touch base. I appreciate you, sir. This has been Real Talk Chicago, and you've been Graffiti Nerd. Hey, word, peace, y'all. Appreciate you. AC flow, I'm elevated to make it. Flaws on the road, but I'm motivated to change it. Times to count me out, what you do to meth, I'm the greatest. Forget the pills that they hand me, I'm putting no holes in the matrix. Money on my mind, I got no time to be thinking fear. Early bird catches the worm, so I'm shanting clear. Waking haters and die to show them I got me the power. We ain't wasting no hours, solemnly I declare. Before the money, I had me the vision. Building empire the right way, you'll end up in prison. If I'm eating fam, eating too. Don't get misconstrued. I want me the event to with the spoilers too. Many days who was hungry but got full off the mission. On every move to be more efficient. Yo, we welcome these naysayers and competitions. This ain't a hobby, this my true religion. Yeah. My team, I'm a mobile mind, I'm a mobile mind, can't be taking no else, only thing I know is where I'm a mobile